blood report indicates an advanced and long-lasting state of exhaustion. The victim is Jeremy Bowles, declared missing five days ago. See reference file. His face is covered with mud, like the other victims. I'm gonna leave. I see you in the office, right? Okay. See you later. A bat. A wolf's head. A crab. Death. Death. I have the results of your MRI scans. Everything seems to be normal. There is no physical damage from the accident. However, I am worried about your psychological condition. I know it's not easy, but you've got to start over, Ethan. You're not responsible for what happened. It's my fault Jason is dead. He'd still be alive if I'd been looking out for him. It was an accident. Accidents happen every day. You can't blame yourself forever for your son's death. How is Sean? I know he's disappointed in me. I'm not the father I used to be. <laughs> he's a great kid, you know. He deserves better. And what about you, Ethan? What do you feel? I feel sort of anesthetized, as if none of this was real. Sometimes I tell myself this whole thing is just a nightmare and that I'll wake up at any moment. Is there something else you wanted to tell me, Ethan? I sometimes have these blackouts, times when 
I don't know what I'm doing. I recover consciousness sometime later, but I'm someplace else. And I have no idea how I got there. Do you think this could be related to the accident? You suffered a massive concussion and were in a coma for six months. We really don't know what effect a shock like that can have on the brain. That's the end of this session. Uh, we'll continue this conversation next week. You were lucky, Ethan. It's very rare to survive such a traumatic accident. I don't exactly feel lucky, Doctor. Something the matter, Sean. No, I'm all right. Aren't you gonna go play with the other kids? I don't feel like it. How did things go at school today? The teacher yelled at me for being late again. She's going to send me home the next time it happens. I'm sorry about that, Sean. Next time, we'll really pull it together, okay? Do you want to eat something? been on a seesaw in a long time. What do you think? Yeah! Come on, Dad! Make me fly! about that merry-go-round. I bet I can push you so fast you won't be able to stay on it. Great! You can! Training for astronauts, though. <laughs>
I'd like a packet of strawberry flavored chewies, please. Thanks. Hey, I got you some chewies. I hate strawberries. Thanks. It was nice of you anyway. Looks like rain's coming. I think we better go. Okay. You know, sometimes I remember before, I mean, when Jason was still here, sometimes I wish everything could just be the way it was before. Me too, Sean. Me too. Hey, Dad, can I have a ride on the carousel? Can I? Sure. Go pick a horse and get on. I'll get a ticket. One, please. That's a dollar. Do you think it's gonna take long? 
No, he should be finished soon. I'm off, Charlene. I'll look at the reports later. I'll cancel all appointments for this afternoon. Okay. Oh, Captain. Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI is here. Jaden, of course. We've been expecting you. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Do you mind tagging along? We can talk as we walk. Yeah, of course. I wanted to introduce myself before getting started, but uh, perhaps there's a better no, time. No, no, it's fine. We just have to get to the press conference. We have them every day now. Believe me, it's not always easy finding something to tell them. Fortunately, today we have some news. Have you met Lieutenant Blake yet? Yeah, we met this morning. He has his own methods, but he's a good cop. I'm sure you'll get him well together. Do you know how to tie a knot in a necktie? I guess. To be frank with you, I could have done without the FBI on this one, but the press are all over us. This origami killer case crept up on us, and it's fast becoming a national concern. There are hundreds of killers in this country, but what do you know? This guy is exotic. He leaves flowers and origami figures. Work that one out. Then the press get onto it, and we suddenly become the center of the universe. I'm here to arrest a serial killer. With all due respect, sir, the rest of it is none of my business. No, of course not. All I'm asking is that you make progress, and fast. The press want a perpetrator, and we're gonna have to serve him up on a silver platter. Hmm. Not bad. Oh, go see Charlie and she'll show you to your office. Yeah, check in on the press conference if you're interested. It'll give you an idea of the political climate around here. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the club, Jaden. Nice watch. Oh, it's the present we offer to our new lieutenants. We've bought the same model each year for the past 20 years for each promotion. It optimizes everybody's time, and it's the kind of thing that always goes down well. You can contribute to our fund if you like. We're still a few dollars short. Congratulate Larry on my behalf. I'll be sure to do that, sir. Captain Perry said you could show me to my office? Yes, of course. Follow me.
This, this is my office? That's where I was told to take you. If you need anything, you know where to find me. Okay, time to work. Step one, change the office. Well, well, looks like there's something new. Harry, comment. Tire tracks on the side of the road behind the railroad line. It may be the killer's car. Killer's car is probably a Chevrolet Malibu 83.
eight victims in the last three years. All boys, aged between nine and 13. No signs of violence. The victims disappear from public places in broad daylight. No one notices anything. Bodies are found three to five days later. Drowned in rainwater. Always the same ritual. An origami in the hand, an orchid on the chest. The victims have always been dead for less than six hours when they were found, which means they remained alive for several days before being drowned. Over 3,500 people questioned, over 100 suspects interrogated. Not a single lead to go on. I need to take some. I'm gonna faint if I resist. It's all right. I know I can make it. I know. I know I can make it. This is Lieutenant Blake, Mr. Marsh. Could you please tell him what happened? It, it was this afternoon. I went to the park with my son, Sean. We played together for a while, and then he wanted to go on the carousel, so I put him on one of the wooden horses, and when I turned back, Sean had disappeared. Exactly what time did you arrive at the park? Try to remember exactly, Mr. Mars. Every detail can be important. It must have been about Five thirty, I think. I'm not really sure. What was your son wearing when he disappeared? He was wearing a coat. A beige coat. And a pair of pants. Brown pants. How could Sean have disappeared without you even noticing? Weren't you right by the carousel? I went for a short walk around the park just for a few minutes. When I got back, the carousel had stopped and Sean wasn't there. You say you took your son to the park after school, but you didn't report him missing until 8.15. Why did it take you so long to contact the police? I searched the whole neighborhood for him. I, I thought he couldn't have gone far. All right. That's all the questions I have for now. You're free to go, Mr. Mars. We'll continue to look for Sean overnight. We'll contact you if we have any more questions. Do... Do you think the origami killer... Listen, your son's probably just run off and he'll turn up in a couple hours. But what if it is the origami killer? Well, 
Well, then we have about four days to find him alive. Did they find something? No, nothing yet, but they're gonna keep looking through the night. Do they... do they think it's the origami killer? It, it, it's still too early to say... ...but it is a possibility. What happened to Ethan? How could you lose Sean like that? You should never have taken your eyes off him! I mean, for God's sake, how hard is it to keep your eye on a child in the park? Why did you leave him, Ethan? Why? Wasn't it enough losing Jason? I'm sorry. That's not what I meant to say. Good evening. Good evening to you, sir. Can I help you, sir? Well, I hope so. My name's Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. Uh, I'm investigating the case of the origami killer. I I'd like to ask you a few questions. My son is dead, Mr. Shelby. I have nothing more to say. The killer has kidnapped another victim, a 10-year-old boy. Like your son, Risa, I have four days before we find his body on a deserted stretch of wasteland. No one did anything to save my son. Now, you would please to move along, sir. I'll leave my card in case you change your mind. Don't bother, Mr. Shelby. There really is no point. Oh, do you sell inhalers? I'm all out, and at least I won't go away completely empty-handed. In the back of this door, to the right. Thanks. Good evening, sir. Are you looking for something in particular? Give me what you got in the registry. Don't fucking try anything. Open the register, you dumb fuck. Put the money on the counter. Shit, you deaf or what? Are you gonna open that fucking register or not? No, sir. You do not have the right to steal that money from me. I have worked very hard to earn it. You cannot have it. What did you say? You're out of your fucking mind, man! You don't get it, do you? I'm gonna put a fucking bullet right between your eyes if you don't do what I say now! You shall not be robbing my register, sir. That money is mine. I ask you now to leave don't before it is around. too late. Yes. Christ! Goddamn! Hey, you! Come here! I said, come here now! Don't move! 
hands up! Put your fucking hands up or I'll shoot! Don't panic, let's just stay calm. Nobody here wants to hurt you. Uh, we're all just gonna be cool, and everything will be all right. Yeah, yeah, I'm cool, man. Everything's gonna be all fucking right. Look, it's not worth it. Put the gun down, and just walk away. You giving me advice? I'll give you some fucking advice. You don't really want to shoot anybody, do you? I'm sure we can find a way out of this mess, right? Now, I want you to put the gun back in your pocket and quietly walk out of the store. My friend and I will forget about what just happened, and you'll have earned a second chance not to fuck up your life. What do you say? Nice try. For a second there, you almost had me believing all your shit. And now, give me the money. 